To everyone, good, uh, good day to those who are in other parts of the world. So, as I've said, we are on the fifth day of this Christmas octave. Octave means eight. Now, the idea and purpose of this octave is that the eight days that follow the two great festivities in the church, that of Easter and Christmas, are these are prolongation of that solemn day. It seems that one day to commemorate such a great event does not suffice. So it has to be prolonged to fully live, relish, experience the mystery being celebrated. That is why the very character of our celebration reflects this point. The octave is ranked precisely in the, in the ranking made by the church as a solemnity. The same as Christmas Day. That's why you have noticed that these eight days we sing the Gloria. We use the, uh, the uh, color white. No. sing joyful uh, Christmas songs so it wants to maintain that spirit of joy and festiveness in celebrating this sublime mystery of the incarnation of the Son of God so that is why it is called the octave no? of Christmas Christmas has not ended with uh, December 25. I had a friend, I received a greeting from her yesterday. Belated Merry Christmas, Father. Some people. I had to tell her, no, it's still Christmas. You are on time, you know. And jokingly, and you are on time to give me your gift still, I said. No. And... Uh, Sometimes the, the consciousness is that uh, it ended already in, uh, on December 25. No. It is Christmas Day from December 25 until the baptism of the Lord. So, uh, so it's not yet late. And as I've said, it is precisely this prolongation of this season is to make us realize and provide us with ample time to relish nam namin as we say in tagalog the mystery that we celebrate now it is ironic here in the philippines that uh, we that after december 25 we do not hear christmas songs anymore now and in fact, we, we start very early. September, we already hear Christmas songs. Siguro napagod na, sabi nga nila. Nasaturate na siguro. No? But precisely now is the time to be playing songs. Uh, and uh, Christmas songs. It's not yet belated Merry Christmas. It's Christmas. No? we should go beyond the uh, the commercial practice no uh, that uh, it starts very early and ends with december 25 no christians should be rejoicing playing christmas songs during these days no in my former parish i remember suggesting to them that Every day during Christmas, they should be playing Christmas songs. No, do not hear only those uh, uh, insinuations of uh, the commercial world that it ended already. No, should be uh, no uh, continue the spirit of Christmas, the celebration of Christmas. No, in order to provide us, as I've said. 
the opportunity to deepen and appreciate this mystery we celebrate. We have heard in today's reading the so-called presentation of the Lord in the temple of Jerusalem. The same uh, gospel we heard last Sunday. But what's the relevance of this action of Mary and Joseph of presenting Jesus to the, temple, to the Lord in His temple in Jerusalem? And what is the connection with the mystery we celebrate on Christmas or the so-called the incarnation of the Son of God? The presentation of Jesus in the temple is, as we must have noticed, it is in obedience to the prescription of the law that every first male child of a couple should be presented to the Lord because belongs to the Lord. And the other prescription is the purification of the mother of, uh, by offering sacrifice to God. So what's the significance of these? It is very profound. It is not just fulfilling this or that prescription of the law, but the, the meaning is Christ's, although Son of God, who is above the law, if we may say so. But Christ, in the performance or in obeying this law, He showed His submission to the law as part of the mystery of the Incarnation. Incarnation being His kenosis, as they say, his self-emptying and assumed the implications of being human. He became human in all senses except sin. To be under the law is part of this, being human. So in doing so, Christ when he became under uh, subject to the law, that he would become indeed a credible savior. Hindi lamang doon sa panlabas, sa, kundi he entered into this dimension of being human to be under the law. Secondly, his submission to the law, to the religious prescriptions of the law, was his way of assuming the religious institutions of the Jewish religion. He assumed for himself now, these in religious institutions. What institutions? Like the Sabbath practices, the synagogue, the temple, religious practices of his people, of prayer, of offering, sacrifices, etc. Religious practices of his people from which he would learn the piety, that disposition of these people towards God. And he was formed precisely as an observant and faithful Jew by his parents and through these religious institutions of his people. It is in the act of obedience to the law that the parents of the child Jesus, Mary and Joseph, would find also a confirmation of the identity of the child as expressed by Simeon now, in the gospel today affirming that indeed this is child 
is a special. It comes from God. It is true that Jesus would be later on would be critical to some of the, these religious practices of his people, like the rigidity of the observance and interpretations of these laws, like the Sabbath, no? and would advocate a more humane understanding of this. Yet Jesus was faithful in the practice of these religious religious practices, religious institutions, he was faithful. He would go beyond to indicate a better way of understanding them, but he never abrogated them. What can we learn from this event? I think one is it is important to be rooted to our religious traditions like Jesus and his parents because these are formative. They were observant. They learned the spirit and virtues connected with the religious traditions and practices. That openness to God that is provided, that is insinuated and taught by these practices. We too, we can say then that uh, we too need to learn and imbibe also the Christian spirit by the practice of our Christian religion. Our practice, constant practice is formative. We need to be rooted in the practice of our faith. Otherwise, we get lost. What sustains Christians in difficult situations, confusing situations, is their rootedness in their faith in Christ and in the practice of faith. I remember I had some students uh, in Tagaytay, these lay people who were former uh, OFWs in uh, countries where they could not practice their faith. They, there was no, no mass there. And uh, I was so edified by their example that even with the with the temptation to be converted to that religion, predominant religion, in order to get more benefits, yet they decided to stay, to be faithful. And what did they sustain them? I remember one example. They would listen from internet, YouTube masses, online masses, no? the reflections of uh, Cardinal Tagle, they would say, in his uh, uh, online or TV uh, reflections, sustain them. And the, uh, the praying of the rosary. And where did they get all this? It was because they were formed in the family in their communities of these practices. So, I think just as Jesus was rooted in his culture, in his religious traditions that sustained him and formed him, we too as Christians can be sustained when we are rooted in the practice of our faith. May the Lord help us, especially parents, the adults who have responsibilities of forming young people to help them appreciate religious traditions that would sustain them as they face life, especially situations where 
this become hostile to the practice of faith. May Christ, who became like us, be our strength and inspiration of being rooted always in our faith. Amen.